Okay, welcome to this video on solving systems of linear equations using elimination. Uh, there are other videos on solving systems of linear equations using graphing or substitution, but here we're going to go into an elimination method. Um, when would I use this? Why would I use this? Um, I've got coins in my pocket. I got 20 coins in all, including nickels and dimes. And I'm going to go ahead and label uh, X for nickels and Y for dimes. And in all, I have $1.35. How many of each coin do I have? Well, I said I have 20 in all, so I'm going to do X plus Y, the number of nickels plus the number of dimes equals 20. And I said I have $1.35 in all, so I'm going to put this. Notice I'm going to leave the decimal out of there. I've got uh, well, nickels are five cents a piece, so five plus, and then dimes are, of course, ten cents a piece. Ten Y equals dollar uh, thirty-five. I left the decimals out of both sides, so this works. Now, if I wanted to solve this equation, um, I could do it several ways. If I was going to graph it, I would need to get those both into slope-intercept form and put them on the graph. If I was going to do it with substitution, I would need to solve one of the equations for X or Y, which is very doable. But I wanted to focus in on this elimination method. In the elimination method, I'm going to, and I'm quickly going to go through this, and then we'll look at the details of why and how it all works in just a minute. But if I'm going to do that, I'm going to multiply this top equation completely through by negative 5. And I'm going to change it. I'm going to rewrite it down here. It's negative 5x minus 5y equals negative 100. When I do that, I'm going to do this little, well, I'm going to add these two equations or uh, expressions equal to each other or I'm going to add them and then I'm going to add this side as well so I'm just adding down and I'll go into detail on that in a minute what happens is is the 5x minus 5x goes out and it's left with 0x and you don't have to put that and then <clears throat> 10y minus 5y is 5y and over here 135 minus 100 of course is 35 the beauty of that is that <clears throat> one of the variables went away x and I'm left with y. So I now can just solve for y. I've got y equals 7, so there must be 7 uh, y's, which are dimes. I'm going back into one of the original equations, x plus y equals 20, and I'm plugging in that 7 for y. So I've got x plus 7 equals 20, and then I solve this and I find out that x is equal to 13, so I know I have 13 nickels. All right, and that's kind of a, okay, how would you use this? Now let's go into a little bit of detail. <clears throat> All right, um, I've got this uh, spinner just to show that there are several different uh, ways that this, um, well, first of all, I'm going to look at the easiest one. And uh, this is where if I just draw this line and I add one uh, side of each equation to the other, so I'm doing negative 8, 8x uh, plus 9x, that's 1x, and positive 10 y and negative 10y, well that zeroes itself out, 0y, zero I don't need to put that, and 8 minus 14 is negative 6, and I end up with x equals 6, oh I'm sorry, negative 6. That's kind of strange because you're just not used to seeing where we add equations to each other, okay, but that's really what you're doing is combining the equations, you're putting something that's equal to itself on both sides, and then it, I don't know, it almost seems magical, magically, uh, eliminates one of the variables. After I get that variable, then I'm going to plug back in. Uh, I'm going to take the top equation, negative 8x plus 10y equals 8, and I'm going to substitute negative 6 in for x. And then I'm going to simplify it. So this is uh, 48 plus 10y. I'm just simple negative times negative is positive. And I'm going to continue to simplify. And what I'm doing here is I am solving for y. So I've got 10y equals negative 40. I divide by 10 and I get y equals negative 4. So I now have the solution to my linear equation, negative 6, negative 4. That's x, y. It's a coordinate. If I were to graph those two equations on a graph, I would find that that's the point of intersection of those two linear equations. Let's go to another one. It's pretty easy. If I, um, these, if I add uh, like I did in the last one, I'll get negative 6x plus 20y equals 40. Well, that didn't get rid of a variable, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, in this particular one, I notice that I have positive 10y in both of them, so I'm going to subtract everything in the second equation uh, from the first equation. So this is 2x minus negative 8x, which is uh, subtracting a negative is really a positive. So it's 10x, and then over here, I've got uh, positive 10y, negative 10y, that zeroes that out. 
and then 20 minus 0, well that's 0, and I need to put that 0 because it's the only thing on that side. So I got 10x equals 0, and I continue to solve, and I get x equals 0. All right. Um, then I'm going to substitute it back into either equation. I'm just using the top one uh, because it's all positive and it just seems a little bit easier to put it in, but I could put it in either one. And I'm putting the 0 in for x. I'm using substitution method at this point. And I get 0 plus 10y equals 20, or just 10y equals 20. And then I'm going to continue to solve with my solvent equations method. I get um, the solution 0, 2. Remember to write your solution to the problem as a coordinate where those two lines intersect. That's what you're trying to find. Um, this next one, sorry for that delay. Let's see. Um, this one, ooh, it says not too bad, so it must be a little bit more difficult, but watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to strategically multiply the top by some number so that when I combine these, I will eliminate a variable. And if you notice, I've got, um, well, for example, here I've got negative 7x. Well, if I could get this to be positive 7 up here, uh, so I'm going to multiply the top one uh, by positive 7. Now where did I choose that? Again, I'm just trying to find something that will um, make those two uh, eliminate each other. And actually, you know what, I'm going to do that by negative 7, sorry, negative 7. So watch what happens when I multiply the top equation by negative 7. I get, well, I'm going to rewrite it down below here. I get positive 7x because it's negative times negative. I get minus, uh, let's see, ooh, 7, 35, 105, minus 105y. I got a little bit ugly. Um, and then equals, now I got to do uh, 70 and 21, 91, negative 91. So I multiplied the top, all the components of the top equation by negative 7. Now, when I combine uh, the second equation with the new uh, revised first equation, the x's go away. I get negative 110y equals negative, uh, that's 110 negative 110. Ooh, that was work. That worked out nice. Negative 110. They don't always work out so nice. I think I made them work out this way so that it would be a little bit easier to work with. Y equals 1. Now notice I got Y this time first. So now I'm going to plug this back into one of the original equations. I'm just picking that top one. 15Y equals 13. And I'm plugging this in for Y. So I've got uh, negative X plus, well, 15 times 1. Of course, it's just 15. So I've got negative x plus 15 equals 13. I subtract the 15 from both sides, and I get negative x equals negative 2. Um, that's negative x, or negative 1x. I'm going to divide by negative 1, so then I get x completely by itself. turns out to be positive 2. So the answer is 2, 1. That's a coordinate. And uh, let's see. One more. Uh-oh. <laughs> this one's the more difficult one. Well, watch what happens. I'm going to take the um, coefficient of the first uh, equation for the, this first variable, 3, and I'm going, to multi I'm going to use that to multiply the second equation by. So it's as simple as just saying I'm going to take that coefficient multiplying by the second equation. Guess what I'm going to multiply the first equation by? The coefficient of the x term over here, and I'm going to do it with the opposite um, I like to do it with the opposite sign. So it was negative 7 there. I'm doing it with positive 7, and watch what happens. Now let me rewrite the first equation. 21x plus 14y equals 56. And I'm going to rewrite the second equation below that. Negative 21x. See why I chose that positive 7 a minute ago? So that I would get opposite signs here, and those will cancel out. Plus 15y equals... Uh, three uh, negative 27. Draw my line. I'm going to combine those. The x's go cancel out. I've got 29y equals and uh, well conveniently 29. Now I divide by 29. Divide by 29. Y equals 1. I'm going to take the 1 and plug it back into this simple equation. 3x plus well 2 times 1 is 2 equals 8. Solve my equation. And I'm going a little bit fast here because I want to get us on to some other examples. X equals 2. So that was not as bad as originally thought. It wasn't that bad. Let's change that to a smiley face. All right. And uh, 
let's go on and take a look. Now at this point, you've seen all the types. Uh, you can follow the suggestion over here. Pause the video, try the problem yourself, resume the video, see if you're correct. All right, I'm going to go fast because you can uh, replay the video at this point. Um, I'm going to first give it a shot. I noticed that I've got uh, 2y, negative 2y, so those are going to cancel out. And uh, I get 2x equals negative 2, divide by negative 2. And I've got x equals 1. I'm going to plug this back in. I think it's easiest to plug it back into this one. 1 plus 2y equals 21. I subtract 1 from both sides. I get 20. I divide by 2. I get 10. The point of intersection of these two equalities is 1, 10 on a graph. All right, hopefully you got that correct. Again, pause if you need to. I'm looking at this one. I'm, they're not going to magically go away. I need to multiply the bottom one by negative 1, or what I'm saying is I'm going to subtract that instead of add it. Okay, so subtract everything. So 5x minus 8x is negative 3x. 10y plus negative 10y is zeroing that out, and that's why I chose to subtract. So this was the um, easier version, but a little bit more difficult than the, than the addition one. I get 18 over here. I'm dividing by negative 3. I get x equals negative 6. Now I'm going to go plug this back into either equation. I'm plugging in the top one. 5 times negative 6 for the x plus 10y equals 20. I get negative 30 plus 10y equals 20. I'm adding 30. I'm doing the opposite operation to both sides. That goes out to 0. 10y equals 50. Dividing by 10 on both sides, y equals 5. And my point of intersection is negative 6, positive 5 on a graph. All right. Next one. Uh, let's see again. Pause if you need to. That'd be great. You try it and then see if you're right. Uh, resume the video. All right, if I simply added these, it's not going to make anything go away. It's negative 8x plus 11y, blah, blah, blah. So that didn't help. So instead of um, just adding, I need to do something. I'm noticing that if I multiply this one by, let's see, uh, let's see, I need to do this one by 3. It'll make it negative 6x here, so I'm going to go ahead and do it by negative 3 to this whole equation. Okay, then I end up with positive 6x because negative times negative is positive, negative 12y. So it's like distributive property across the entire equation. Negative 3 times negative 20 is 60, positive 60. So I've canceled that one out. Well, not cancel, I'm, I'm replacing it with this new equation. Now I can do the simple stuff. I just add down those things are going out to 0x and then this is negative 5y equals uh, 35. All right, dividing by negative 5 on both sides to find out that y is equal to negative because it's positive by, by negative 7. Plugging it back in, I'm choosing the second equation that's all squigglied out. Plugging in negative 7 in for y equals negative 20. I chose a nasty one to do because it's got all these negatives in it, but sometimes you can't avoid it. Negative 2x minus 28 equals negative 20. Adding 28 to both sides, I get negative 2x equals 8. Dividing by negative 2, and I find out that x is equal to negative 4. All right, and... Uh, I think I just got one more. So the solution to this one was negative 4, negative 7. And uh, let's continue the video. All right, again, pause if you need to. Try to work it. Here's one where I'm going to need to multiply both equations by a number. So I'm going to try to stick with the slightly smaller numbers. I'm going to multiply this equation by 3. And then the top one by negative 8. How did I choose that? Well, I use this number. Whoops, positive 8. I want to do the opposite of that one. Um, well, let me rewrite that. So I got 72x plus 24y equals uh, 80 and 40, negative 120. And then down here I've got uh, 24x. That's not going away. But this one is negative 24y. And I've got, uh, what, 72? 72? Yeah, I think so. Negative 72. I'm going to now, so that was this one replaced. Now I'm just adding down, and I've got uh, 96x 
these are canceling out that's good news and this comes out to negative 192 all right and dividing by 96 and I believe that comes out to negative 2 x equals negative 2 now I'm going back into either equation plugging in that x value that I got and trying to find out what y is negative 15 all right we got negative 18 plus 3y equals negative 15 I'm gonna add 18 add 18 you get a lot of solving equations in these things and that comes out to 3 and conveniently all of my answers came out non-fractional nice integers doesn't happen so much in the real world but we're practicing you guys try these four problems I'm assuming a bunch of you are watching this. All right, you try these to take them to your teacher um, to prove to them that you know this, you're ready for a retake, or you're ready to take your test. They'll have the right answers, or they can quickly come up with it and uh, let you know if you're doing it right. Thank you.